For the remainder of this video lesson, I'd like to focus on an example meant to hit home the advantages of using recursive thinking when building mathematical models. I'd also like to preface the example by noting that some of the mathematical details in the example will seem unfamiliar to some. If you're one of those people, then take heart. By the end of the course, all the details will make sense. The example I want to explore involves bees. The sex of bees is determined in an interesting way. Female bees develop from the fertilized eggs produced by their mother, whereas males develop from the unfertilized ones. Consequently, female bees are diploid and male bees are haploid. That is to say, females inherit one chromosome from their mom and a second from dad. Males, however, possess only the single chromosome they inherit from mom. Keeping this mechanism of sex determination in mind, we now ask, what is the probability that an allele currently found in a male originated from one in a male going back in time exactly t generations? Let p sub t be the answer to the question. That is, let p sub t be the probability an allele currently found in a male originated from one also found in a male t generations ago. Our goal is to devise a model for p sub t, and we'll do this recursively. We suppose that we've got the model for p sub t minus 1, and express the model we're looking for in terms of that. I know it seems weird, but hear me out. If we've solved the problem for t minus 1, then we know that the probability that the allele currently found in a male originated from one currently found in a male t minus 1 generations ago is equal to p sub t minus 1. That's by definition. Now, given that the allele was found in a male t minus 1 generations ago, we know that it must have come from a female in the previous generation because males only inherit genes directly from females. So in this case, the probability that the allele in question originated from a male t generations ago must be zero. We now execute the same thought process, imagining that the allele in question originated from a female t minus one generations ago. Because we're working on the assumption we have our answer for t minus one, we know that the probability of tracing ancestry back to a female t minus one generations ago is given by 1 minus p sub t minus 1. Given this event, we know that the allele in question was equally likely to have come from this female's mom as it was to have come from her dad. So, we can say that the likelihood we're looking for is 1 half. Let's put all the information together now to calculate p sub t. With probability p sub t minus 1, the allele originated from a male t minus 1 generations ago, in which case our answer is 0. The flip side is that with probability 1 minus p sub t minus 1, the allele originated from a female t minus 1 generations ago, in which case our answer is a half. Tidying this up, we get this expression, to which we can attach the observation that p sub 0 must equal 1, since we're 100% sure the allele is currently in a male. My objective here is not to have you worry about probability calculations, at least not yet. We'll learn more about these types of probability calculations later in the course. What I do want to drive home is the point that it's easy to begin solving modeling problems by thinking recursively. We can't pat ourselves on the back quite yet because we're not done, and the next part of the process I do expect you to worry about now. In this next part of the process, we take on the challenge of turning the recursive model, rewritten here, into a non-recursive one. The recursive equation we're trying to solve in this example doesn't quite look like the one we solved earlier in the video. We do have a constant multiplied by the t minus 1 term. However, we now have an extra constant tacked onto the right-hand side. This almost linear recursive equation is called an affine linear equation and we solve it using a little trick. First, we let u sub k equal p sub k minus one third. Next, we go back to the equation itself and subtract one third from both sides. Breaking up the one third on the right like this leads us here. 
As you can see, we can now write things in terms of the new variable we've introduced. Of course, we should also translate the information we have about the current state of the allele, which gives us this. What we've managed to do here is transform the affine linear equation involving P into a linear one involving U. The bonus is that we've already seen how to solve this earlier in the video. The solution is U is equal to negative a half, all in brackets, raised to the power T, multiplied by the initial value of two thirds. Translating back into P, we get the solution we sought. We're left with an explicit relationship between P and T. At this point, you might be thinking that the decision to create a new variable U by subtracting one third from the old variable P appears to be unmotivated. I will say that creating a new variable in this way is a standard approach to solving the kind of affine linear equation we have in this example. I'll also say that in order to decide on one third, I applied a systematic method that you can adapt to similar situations in the future. Here's what I did. I focused on the recursion and ignored the information about the initial situation. I then set both p sub t and p sub t minus 1 equal to some constant value I call p hat. Generally speaking, quantities like p hat are called equilibria or steady state values because they don't change over time. This lack of change over time is why we say p sub t is the same as p sub t minus 1. Moving on, what we have is an equation for p hat. We can solve this equation to find that p hat is equal to one third. It was this value we subtracted from p sub k to create our new variable. Let's wrap up now with a recap. We built a model for population growth and found that recursive reasoning helps tremendously in mathematics. We weren't entirely happy with some of the predictions made by this model, but we'll come back to population growth later. We moved on to discuss a more difficult problem involving the genetics of bees. The solution again involved recursive reasoning, and we solved this problem by transforming it into a version of one we'd already tackled. By the time you've mastered the ideas presented in this video, you'll be able to do three things. You'll be able to use information about some scenario to develop a linear recursive equation, then solve that equation to reveal an explicit relationship between the quantity of interest and time. Next, you'll be able to do exactly the same for affine linear recursive equations, like the kind we encountered in the B example. But please remember for now, probability is not our worry. Finally, you'll be able to critically evaluate models like the one we built for population growth. You'll also be able to suggest improvements to the model aimed at capturing elements of reality you might be interested in studying. To achieve these outcomes, I'll encourage you to do more than simply watch this video. Of course, you should read the text and complete the exercises, but don't be afraid to respond to questions posed by your classmates on the forums, or challenge them by posing questions of your own. I think you'll find that learning as part of a community is not only easier, it can also be a lot of fun.